listening to volume 121 of the Strange Grooves podcast. I'm Sharice Letson. I'm Kate Milberry. And we're joined by a special honorary guest, Amelia Bailey. What's up? Hello. So we have a super special episode. Kate, I think this might, I've been really excited for this one. I think this might top our, our interview with Ken Tobias. Don't let Ken hear you say that. Oh, no. Yeah, no. come on. No. No, no. no but just Sharice has been <laughs> five years ago. She yeah. said if we start a podcast, if we ever, ever got to interview Ken Tobias, or if we were ever to talk to Matt Mays, it would be kind of like, that's when we know that we were on that. <laughs> so it's kind of, it is, it's like, it's kind of a, a big moment for us. So Well, that makes me happy. It's, I appreciate the, that. It's some blessing over here. So everybody, welcome to the show. Yes, thank you. Matt um, Mays. Thank you for joining us. No, no problem. Um, so it was uh, it was super great to uh, connect with you uh, last month when you were playing uh, St. John for uh, Bash on the, was it Bash on the Bay? That's what yeah. It was yeah, Bash on the yes. Bay. Um, it was great to to catch up with you there. I guess how have things been going? How has the rest of the summer uh, been going with shows and whatnot? It's been super duper busy. It's um, hold on, my dog wants to get out. Her boyfriend's here. My dog's boyfriend's here. Just one second. Oh, just God, right, yeah. just just <laughs> exclusive. <laughs> Sorry about that. No worries. <laughs> I should have let her out earlier. Her boyfriend comes to visit twice a day, Hank, and they just have this love affair and she goes nuts if she can't go out. So yeah, you can't hold back. Yeah. Anyways, the um, yeah, we, it was an insanely busy summer for uh, for us playing. Uh, busier than we're used to, I guess. It's because I think everything's kind of coming back to life again and all that. So, um, yeah, we just finished. Uh, we did five nights out east at the Shore Club, and then two nights in Charlottetown. Adam and I did solo, and. Um, yeah, it's just there's been a lot of fly-ins. We're going to Moose Jaw this weekend to uh, do a show with Chilliwack, which I'm pumped about. Oh my and, god! Uh, nice. Wow. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, awesome. we're playing after Chilliwack, which seems really wrong. I feel I feel really yeah. bad about that, but because they're Chilliwack and way more hits, like it's going to be like the worst band to follow ever. But uh, anyways, yeah, and then you know, just a bunch of other weekend kind of things. It's kind of the summer vibe where it's just, just a lot of weekends and. And um, just coming back here and then flying out. And so it's been really busy and kind of exhausting, but uh, in a good way, because I'll do that for forever. If I like it's uh, I'll never get sick of it, because uh, especially after two years off with COVID, it's, it's hard to, yeah. to complain anymore about any shows, really, you know, so. Exactly. I was going to ask sort of how does it feel to sort of be back to like a normal touring performing schedule with, you know, no masks, no restrictions type of thing i think finally it i didn't even think about masks at the short club like i didn't even i jumped in the crowd i i mean you know i maybe i should have been thinking of it more but i think anybody that was there and it was okay being so shoulder to shoulder and crammed in didn't really care too much about that and we're there for the shows which i think the medicinal qualities of a of a show like that outweigh i think a lot of you know, if people are compromised or whatever, it's, it's, it sucks. They can't come and they can't, you know, it's like that will be me someday, I'm sure. And, but uh, I think for just, just to, to bring people back out of this funk is, and this sort of the, there's such a toll it's taken on us mentally to just to be able to throw in, to throw a bunch of people into a room and, and have that sort of the magic that comes from a rock show or any show happen before our eyes again was just you really realize how much it really helps us mentally and people who really love music like us it's like it's essential yeah. so i uh, yeah it was i guess to answer your question i guess it's it's really it's just i didn't i it just didn't really it felt like it was before the COVID. i didn't even think of COVID the whole time i was just thinking about my shows or lyrics or whatever and it felt really good to go to bed at night and going okay wow that I didn't think about COVID that whole night. I'm just thinking about my show again and making it better or, or whatever. So it was fantastic. Yeah. You had mentioned yeah. that at the Area 506 show. Yeah. Like that you had kind of said that, you know, you had made a speech that night just about like being back and, and playing. Like, it was, you know, where I think it made everybody quite emotional, honestly. Yeah. yeah. I understand a lot, both both sides of the story, but I don't think, I don't think a, lo a lot of medical professionals have been front row at a rock concert as much as I have. 
And I think I have a pretty professional opinion on the medicinal qualities of music because I've been front row, literally front row center for, you know, over half of my life. And uh, I'm no professional medic or, or doctor. I don't have a PhD, but I kind of, I, I know what I see every night and I know yeah. that I've seen people get healed by music and it sounds cheesy, I guess, to some that don't, that haven't been there. But I know you have all felt it, and I think that can't really go away as easily again. You know, people decide they want to and need music. Um, I'll really stand by that, and I'll do secret bootleg shows if I have to, just because I know how important it is, and 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 um, and that goes both ways. You know, like it's 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 a cyclical thing that happens at a really high RPM. Those shows where it's just like. The, the healing that comes out of that kind of adrenaline and, and the je ne sais quoi of it all. We don't know what it is, but you just, you, you get healed. No, right. uh, I believe I, I don't want anybody to tell me to stop doing that anymore. You know? Um, I'd also say too that like we've noticed even, even before a pandemic, I think a lot of folks, especially in, I'd say the under 5,000 venue, which is still quite, quite big. Even if you're just looking yeah. at like small venues, people are really, really courteous and conscious of safety and inclusivity. And they don't want that access taken away because arts and, arts and culture is so important both to the economy and to thriving artists and bands right yeah so i think we see a level of safety where we are still sometimes seeing whether it be mandated mass or social distancing because people don't want their shows and things to be canceled so i see both but i'm i would agree that most people going out want to be able to go out so they are being safe they're not going to go out if they're you know whether they've got the flu or covid so that's at least our, our and they'll experience. do they'll do what they need to do to get to the show so if you have yeah. the masses mandated yeah, work. yeah, that's it, a hundred percent. And I, I believe in safety as well. And and again, if something else comes along that's four times as contagious or whatever, I'll change my tune. But you know, as far as what we've learned so far, it's sort of um, that's sort of based sort of basing it off of that. But but if everybody's getting tested or wears masks or or feels that they want to wear a mask, it's I, I'm totally say, obviously safety first. However, I think there was a time where a lot of the mental health went pretty south. For music lovers yeah. including myself and i don't that that can't happen again i don't think you know yeah no i agree and um sort sort of off topic but i know it was like very well populated but what was the calgary stampede like oh it was nuts you know it was yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's so weird I, I like just from city to city or if even yeah city to city not even province to province like you know, we did both both years. So the first show we ever played that was open back up again, no masks or anything, was in Moncton. And it was uh, like the first show back that we've ever played as a full band after a few years. It was just insane. Like Moncton was just, just like, they were just ready for a show. And we, we were kind of freaked out because it was the first show without masks or with like my whole band. It was like, yeah. and it was incredible because it was jammed and it was like, the band was hadn't played together in two years, so we were so excited and like just like so loud. I forgot how loud it was, you know. <laughs> it was like rock and roll is loud. It's like this is nuts, and it was really crazy. But then after the show, it was like, well, should we have done that? That was kind of weird, you know. And then we would go and play somewhere else that would be in New Brunswick. I think we did Harvest or or so maybe no. We we came to St. John, and it was that um, we were all, it was all bubbled. Yeah the, yeah, the first, the first, the first, yeah, yeah. And it was all bubbled out and it was on this like two days after or something, you know, it was like, which is also great too. And we respected those rules yeah. as well, but it yeah. was like same province even, but just totally different mandates. And, and that yeah. was just everybody's feeling out there, feeling out everything, you know, so. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. that's kind of I was just curious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and he, that's all, that's what we said. It's, we just were decided band and crew, just whatever, this town wants to do, will do, and and respect it because it's just how it, that's what was going on, you know. Also, off topic about the Calgary Stampede, did you see Kevin Costner while he was oh, there? Oh, sorry, Dancy, the, the Stampede was nuts. It's always yeah, it was yeah, it was crazy as usual. I did not see Kevin Costner. No, that would have been very cool. <laughs> no, he I was like I don't, the question of their parade. Apparently, Yellowstone. <laughs> see, I love him to death, and I think I'd be a little worried about seeing him play in case it would really kind of like kind of send me on a trajectory away from liking him so much, you know, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. Not, I hate to be snobby or anything, but you know, it's just historically movie stars aren't that good of band leaders or musicians, you know, or, and you know, it doesn't work the other way around. There's a lot of good actors that are 
Yeah, true. For the musicians. I don't know why it doesn't it doesn't flip, but it doesn't. You know, you know, there's exceptions, and you know, maybe Costner is one. I haven't heard his album, but uh. <laughs> it's a country western. Of course it is. Yeah, yeah, totally. It's definitely not about Waterworld or whatever. No, I, I think if anyone, it'd probably be Post Malone duetting on it. Just yeah. seems, seems right. Anyways. Sure, so, sure. Yeah. Yeah. My weird collabs in my head. That's, that's <laughs> Sure. So uh, as we mentioned earlier, we're, you know, we, you've been, uh, I guess we were really looking forward to having on the show and we have so many um, questions uh, to ask you. And I guess one of the sure. ones I've been, uh, I wanted to, to ask is sort of who are, like, who have been some of, the most influential artists, musicians, bands in your life, I guess, over, you know, the last 20 years or however long you've been. Yeah. Yeah. A long time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, well, 30 years almost since I, since I started, um, uh, definitely 30 years since I started really getting into records and my, uh, my dad had a really good record collection. So, um, I kind of started out with, you know, the classic stuff like, you know, the stones and the Beatles and Neil Young and Lightfoot and, um, Joni Mitchell and Cat Stevens and just a lot of really songy stuff and that became sort of my standard was just like um, or you know even getting introduced to ACDC um, I guess that came a little later but 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 just always stuff with songs behind it you know and um, just I remember my dad had uh, Deja Vu that Crosby Stills and Nash and Young record that he didn't even push on me I just found it because I thought the cover was kind of cool like the old cowboy photo yeah. And I was, I played in my school band. I played saxophone in my band and we used to go to these like band competitions. And I remember I took that, that cassette because I thought the cover was cool and put it in my life in these big, like yellow, chunky Sony sports walk bins back in the day and, and uh, put it on the bus. And it was just like from listening to that record from beginning to end, like it was just mind boggling because I was just getting into Neil Young and all those, all those dudes. And, and, um, Anti-shock on the Neil Young walking. Yeah, yeah, the mega bass on, anti-shock on, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I felt so baller with that when it came out. I was like, watch the, out. I, like, the, I wore it with big army pants. The, the G-shock one called? or whatever, yeah. Like, the yeah, blue one, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. I thought <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that was, yeah, those were great. I missed those. Um, but yeah, just, just, just the, those, you know, records and I found uh, Desire, that Dylan record, and it was just really uh, all very mind blowing at it, you know, and just when you go from like, you know, playing with like GI Joes and then, you know, a few years later, you kind of like, you start getting feelings and, you, you know, I started liking girls and started liking, you know, rhythm and stuff more and sort of, you know, you start getting mojo or whatever and you hear albums like that at that age, it's like, it really sort of, it really latches on to you because it's like yeah. this is such a strong, it's like a bolt of lightning coming out of your, you know, your uh, Walkman <laughs> um, or your, yeah, or your Discman. Uh, but, uh, and then you just, I just kind of followed that trail and I just learned everything there was about that era and, and, um, and whether it was, yeah, I mean, it just, it just went like crazy, like a wild, like tree that branched off everywhere. And I just sort of, sat and I didn't watch TV. I just sat in front of my stereo and educated myself on all of it. And I learned how to play guitar because of it, you know? And, um, and it was just, I just realized that all those songs, almost all of them are no more than four chords, the ones that I like the best, you know? And it's like, what? Like, these are only four chords. Like, and I know these chords, you know? So then you put that kind of those pieces together and, and, um, and that, that was it. But, but yeah, I mean, I just all of that 60s and 70s stuff, really. And then I kind of, uh, you know, I did definitely Lightfoot because my old man was a big Lightfoot fan. And it was just as far as like the real, like, concentrated songwriting, like the really perfectionist songwriting, you know. And then the other side of the coin, it's like Neil Young was way more stream of conscious, con conscious songwriting. And, you know, after the gold rush and his first record and, uh, everybody knows this is nowhere. I remember I rented this guy. He's awesome. I wish I could find him now in Halifax. He had a, a record store and he would let us rent. I think he liked us because we were in a band and we were like 14 or something. He would let us rent like 14 year olds rent his like original version of everybody knows this is nowhere. You know, it'd be like 
boys would trust you just we liked him so much it wasn't like he scared us he'd be like just <laughs> just don't scratch it man and we like so we were super yeah. careful not to because we liked him so much you know and i remember like eating dinner with my parents and i'd have it on and i heard like the guitar solo playing in the basement to cover on the sand and i'd just be like what is this going on in the basement you know and i couldn't wait to finish dinner and go down and listen to the whole thing again and that's when I got into Neil Young, how he was so different than everybody and so weird and every record was so different. And it's like, you can be one dude or one person and you call your own shots and do whatever what you want for a record. That, that it's only four different chords, but you can do it any, way, any which way you want to do it, right? And um, I guess it was just that sort of freedom that, that uh, of those artists that, because they, it was, that's, that's such a magical time looking back now still of, uh, of record making that's for the pinnacle of, of freedom and awesome well not freedom but as far as good music a lot most songs haven't been taken yet and there's just all this you know it's the, the the production kept getting better and it's more exciting you know and it was just such a you know drugs and cigarettes and booze and whatever it was all just kind of like peaking and not saying that's the best thing to do for songwriting but at that time you know, Acid made a lot of really awesome and cool music, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, and, you know, when you listen to Jimi Hendrix, there's no more Acid guitar players anymore, <laughs> you know, John Mayer did a bunch of Acid, I would listen to that record, yeah, you know? same. but he doesn't, you know, but yeah. um, it was just, yeah, it's just a potent time, so to, to, to have that second generation hand-me-down music was just like, and I really needed it, because I wasn't really into anything else, I didn't play hockey, I'm from Cole Harbor, so getting those uh, that that colorful burst of excitement in my life was really uh, was really uh, um, I'm very grateful for it now. Yeah. What's your uh, relationship, I guess, with with vinyl now? Like, do you still collect yourself? Do you still listen to it? Is that one of the main like the main formats you listen to? Yeah, all the time. I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, I have a bunch of vinyl, and I love buying it. And I, there's a bunch of. Um, uh, great antique shops around here and they've got some really good deals and some really good uh, Really great collections and really neat, you know that it's like it's kind of for old people So it's not like you're downtown Toronto. So it's just like all these old antiquers that come around It's so like oh, I'll just you know make it two for five or whatever two for ten and Best. I guess Yeah, I just feel loading up and I just I can't say where I get it because it's just like <gasps> every time I'm there I just like it's amazing. I'm okay. I'll tell you guys if you're ever in this neighborhood. <laughs> but it's uh, it's well, really take us there. We'll see what we find. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, yeah, anytime. Um, but yeah, I, I'm always buying new vinyl and and um, and I like take it's it's a good thing to take chances on too because there's a lot of stuff that you can get for even two dollars that is just like this looks like kind of there's got to be one good song on this you know and there almost always is you know it's worth the two dollars to find this one song that nobody knows about I do and, have uh, vinyl shopping i always buy the ones that i know and that i want but then i'll always also buy one that i have no idea what the band is or what genre of music it is but it's just yeah. a cool cover mm -hmm. yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, you don't judge books by covers, but judge albums by covers sometimes. Yeah. For sure. yeah. Well, they're <laughs> be just so much more powerful. Well, yeah, because yeah, because there's like you know, I don't know. It's like it's it's like the, you see these cool instruments in the cover, or them playing live or something, and it's like yeah. this, this band looks like they're pretty awesome, you know. Yeah, but, it's, we talk about that quite a bit sometimes about how like you know back in the seventies and whatnot, like the the inserts that you would have in records and just like the, the photos that were there, like it was a whole production. It was before a lot of music videos and things. Right. So like that yeah. was the entity of the brand. Now you buy a record for 50, $60 and you might get a digital download code. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe it's, yeah. it's like, you know, the record doesn't have colors on it. Sometimes it's very basic. So I do yeah. wish that there was like kind of more of like a, a more experience to things, but a lot of bands still do it. So I'm not, you know, trying to take away, but yeah. There are yeah. Some definitely have the capital to do it that don't yeah it's That's a money crazy. thing too a lot of the time because yeah. it's yeah. expensive yeah. It, it, it is it is yeah i think the last thing we did was like the like a live album and i really wanted to to 
to like kind of splurge a bit on the cost because we could afford to. And I had a label that was backing it up a bit to, to make it like a real sort of thing. So when you listen, sit down and listen to it, there's lots of photos of the band and things, you know, whatever, like, and, um, and, but, you know, as it, it turns out, it's like, it was one of my better selling records vinyl wise, because people really, when they pick it up, they kind of feel like it's like this thing and it's got value to it. And it's like people who are going to pull the trigger on buying vinyl, they want it for that reason. And it's yeah. like, and uh, yeah, I think, I think I'm, I'm going to try to do that for every vinyl I do from that one, just make it more of a, more of a thing, or at least a limited run of it for people who want that, that sort of, that physical connection of it, which is, that's all, I think I speak for all of us here. We get that, you know, it's like, it's just like you, you stream a whole album on Spotify or even a song and it just doesn't feel like yours. It's sort of nice to feel like you own a piece of what the band is selling. And, and, and my dad still, even he, you know, he's spent whatever, $2 on a Stones record in 68. He still has it. And he's still like, he's still yeah. like, you know what I mean? He still has, you know, he held on to them all these years and it still mean everything to him, you know? And it's like, it's, that's the thing. It's just, it's not like it just goes away. Like most Spotify, anything now just kind of goes away. What's the next thing? It's uh, when you sort of even spend whatever, 25 bucks on something or 30 or hundred, you know, that's like, if you have that record your whole life, that's like 0 0.005 yeah. cents, which is what we get paid on Spotify <laughs> per play. <laughs> You know, it's just like, and you got this thing for the rest of your life, right? So, anyways. But, yes, I have a lot of vinyl, and it's still a big, big part of my life for sure. Well, this might be a perfect uh, segue. I usually save this question till the end, um, but, you know, strange segue. Um, <laughs> it's uh, So, we call this uh, section uh, Strange Solitary Sounds now. Um, so, yes, we do. Um, to not get sued by the BBC. Um what would be in your collection, or maybe not in your collection, what would be three records you would bring with you to a desert island, and why? I hate this question, but yeah, I also well. love it. <laughs> I also love it. Um, I usually have, like, it always changes, right? Because, you know, you, you think about this a lot, and sometimes it's it would be, uh, you'd want something that's like a, like something long, you know? like a long album, right? Just, just being like logical, you know, something that's a super, super long album. Um, you know, no one has ever said that in the, in the 120. Yeah, that's really? really? Yeah, yeah, that's really so that's longer. Actually, or if it was like a double disc or something like that, like yeah. no one's ever really. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Or yeah. like a triple album. It's just like be logical. All of a sudden you have three in one. And then now instead of three desert islands, you've got five desert island records, right? There we go. You know, but um, you know, plastic plastics three or you know, I don't know. So it's just any triple record. Um, um, this this actually, I I brought this out because it's just like you know, you'd ask something about my favorite records these days or whatever. I don't know why, but this is called the Dalak Man, and I am obsessed with it. And I can't for it's been two years now, and I can't turn it off. And it's all just instrumental music. And I feel like because of the fact that it's been two years and I listen to it probably three times a week still, and I'm still not sick of it. And I love how it makes me feel. I think this would be one of them. This guy's, his name is Hailu Majera or M M M M M yeah, Majera or whatever. And it's called the Dalek Man. And this is the tape. They just photocopied the tape. Cassette. This is a cassette cover. Oh. And they just photocopied it and put it on like a pink background. There's this company that goes through West Africa and finds all these awesome tapes and puts them out. Um, it's on Spotify, actually, too. You can listen to it now. But it sounds the best on vinyl, and it's a little warbly. Anyways, this is definitely the Dalek Band. This tape record is definitely one. And I don't know. It was. It's going to have to be, uh, I, I don't know, maybe uh, – Maybe Harvest. I'm thinking of records I never get sick of, you know. Um, I don't know. Uh, and it's maybe, uh, I don't know, man. It's got to be maybe a classical record or I don't know. That's just, I can't even, I don't, I can't. 
He's glitching out. I'm <laughs> glitching out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's frozen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's just like, Pretending to be frozen, so I have some time to think about it. 100%. I don't know. I, that's, yeah, I don't know. That's tough. I mean, Beatles, Stones, or whatever, but I think I would get sick of listening to Revolver every day on an island, you know? Yeah. Right? Okay. It would have to be, like, something really weird and, and deep, or, like, maybe, yeah. like, a instrumental Brian Eno record or something, or music for airports or something like that. I don't know. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah. Something okay. that's like digs a deep groove, but nothing that you can really like lyrics might be a really bad idea on these records. Right. You might want to want lyrics on any of these, right? Yeah. Maybe as you age on this desert Island, you would, these soundtracks would have more meaning. It would morph to how you're feeling at the time. Right, we could apply your own life to these instrumentals way more than just like a man needs a maid or whatever. You know, it'd be like something yeah. a little more. You could actually apply yourself and your own life to it. So very prolific, yeah. strange, solitary. Sounds. Yeah, no, that's. I love the practical uh, thoughts behind this. Thank you. These are great answers. Yeah, and like thanks. <laughs> I want to circle back to Neil Young because I, I know um, for those listening, you wouldn't know this, but when we did um, briefly chat uh, at 506, um, you had, like one of the questions that we ask is about memorable shows. And I do remember you telling us about a Neil Young episode or like a uh, concert you had gone to. Do you mind talking about that? Yeah. Yeah. I've got two, two Neil Young like, like lightning bolt stories. Like when I, when I was, I think I was, just got out of high school, so I was 18, and we, me and my bud slept out for Neil Young tickets to the Metro Center in Halifax. It was called the Metro Center at the time. And um, we got really good seats. We were like 10 rows from the front. Anyways, uh, I just said, that, you know, I've been playing guitar for a while now. He was my all-time fave. I couldn't even believe he was coming to Halifax with Crazy Horse. Like, it was yeah. nuts. It was nuts. And um, <clears throat> this is like before the internet pretty much, right? So we slept out for seats. Fought our way to the front row, and I remember in Rock and Roll Free World, he, uh, he, I remember it was the last show, the the, the last song of the show, and uh, I was front row, I was losing it, and he he played the last guitar solo right in front of me, and he was like just reefing on this guitar. Well, the house lights were on by the, by that time, and uh, he just for the whole solo, he just stared me right in the eyes, and when Neil Young looks at you, he's looked at me in the eyes three times in my life, and. This is the first time, and you know, he just like lasers, you know, and it was probably only for like two seconds, but it felt like an eternity to me because I was like, oh my God, he's looking at me. And he was just reefing on his guitar, and I was just like mesmerized. And I was like, okay, I want to do this. You know, I remember like turning around and seeing the whole arena singing the, the lyric, the, the chorus to Rock and Free World. And, uh, and it was nuts. So I went home going, this is what I want to do. I'm going to be a singer in a band. That's it. I mean, this is it. And, uh, Anyways, the second time I met him was in Nashville and, um, uh, no, sorry, in Austin. He just was the keynote speaker at South by Southwest. And, um, I was just walking back to my hotel and we were staying at the same hotel. And I was like, oh my God, he's walking this way. And he was with Peggy and Elliot, his manager. And I was like, I gotta say, I gotta say something. I gotta stop him. And, and I did. I stopped him and I just said, hi, I'm at Canadian. And then he's like, with those same like robot eyes. And he was so nice. He was such a nice guy, and I got a photo with him. It was really awkward because the guy who was taking the photo, the camera wasn't working. So I had like Neil Young on my arm like this for like a, a really awkward amount of time. You know, an <laughs> eternity. Yes, yeah. I was trying to like, extract everything, all the energy out of him. I was like, you know, and he's like, he's like, is that thing working or not? Whatever. And we got the photo. And then just a few years ago, before right before COVID, I think um, he played in a little schoolhouse in Omimi, his whole hometown, and. Uh, and uh, Greg Keeler from the rodeo couldn't go, so he gave me his ticket, which I'm in forever in, the, in the Greg's debt for that. Yeah. So I showed up, wasn't on the list. I was like, oh, man, this is like the whole town was booming because it was Neil Young's hometown, and he's never played Omimi. And this is just like, there's like a legion, a town hall, which we played, which is only like 150 people or something, and uh, a few tiny little diners or something. Anyways, so I got there, got turned away at the door, I was so sad because I was so excited. There, I remember driving there. There was a, it was a full yellow moon on the rise, and it was like peace flying across the sky. It was like you were in a Neil Young song, 
I was, I said, I can't believe this is going to happen. So we went there, got turned down. Anyways, somebody I knew was working there and was like, Matt, you're on the list. You just didn't make it to the front. Anyways, I got to sit in the front row because nobody was, everybody was too scared to, there's reserve, reserve signs everywhere. Right. And um, I talked to Bob Young that day, his brother, he called me and I thought I was talking to Neil. He's like, hey, Matt, it's Bob Young. And I, I thought it was Neil for sure. They saw identical. He's, I remember him saying, uh, Neil doesn't want any of the uh, music industry in the front row. So he's giving it all to musicians, whatever. And I was like, how cool is that? He stuck all the label people in the back. And so it was all musicians in the front. And so that's how I knew it. I was like, yeah, let's just take these front seats. And it was like right in front of his journey through the past piano, which is on the floor. Yeah. And, um, and so the third time he like burned holes through my head was when he was singing Sugar Mountain. Um, and he's saying, ain't it funny how you feel when you're finding out it's real? And he, he said that. He looked right at me. And I remember just nodding my head like, yes, I do kind of know that. And I was just sort of like, I was paralyzed again. I was like, Neil Young Paralysis, you know, volume three. And and uh, it's on Netflix. You can see me freeze. My, I just freeze. And <laughs> it's the most captured on video. And I watched it just to see if I actually did it. And it's you can watch it. I'm just like you know, in his, you know, just totally stuck in his tractor beam eyes. And, and again, I went home really inspired and just like, I don't know, it's just like getting to meet Jesus Christ. But it's, for me, it's more important to meet Neil Young. And I, I just, I got to, he's still alive, you know? So it was, uh, that's the story. Those are my three Neil Young stories, but. I think that's cool. I read his, uh, I have his, uh, his biography, Shaky. Yeah, so good. It wasn't, it wasn't like a huge, huge Neil Young fan. It was one of those things I bought it at like a book sale for like Boys and Girls Club. Sure. And like I bought it when I was a, like a teenager. And then like I got to know like quite a bit about him. And I always wondered if he was like nice in person or if he was going to be like, you know, just kind of like go fuck off to everyone. Right. Like and, yeah. and all he deemed also like Jesus Christ. Right. So yeah. I, 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 was He's, he, I think if you, you stand in the way of his musical vision, like I pity whoever tries to do that, and many people have tried, I think that's when he can just turn, right? If you just try to encroach in, in, in on his vision at all, or, you know, then, then I think he loses it. But uh, I think as far as from what I've, I have a lot of friends who have met him, and he's just like, he loves musicians. He's just supportive and, and super down to earth and nice, you know. Adam Baldwin met him once uh, after his show at the Metro Center, I don't know, probably five years ago. And he was just walking from the Metro Center down Grafton Street in Halifax with his banjo on with Peggy. And uh, and Adam went up to him, and he was just, like, super nice to Adam. He stopped talking for, like, 15 minutes. He wouldn't stop playing his, his banjo guitar and talked to Adam, asked him if he plays in a band. It was like super nice. And yeah, he's just like, he's just a, yeah, he's just an eccentric dude. And he's just so vicious about his, you know, artistic journey that, and he just will not let any, he will not let it be infringed upon, you know. And maybe a dumb question, but no such thing. Would you like, would, he be someone you would be open to collaborate with or would you re like to keep it separate because you, you do appreciate his music so much. If Amelia wanted to collaborate with me, <laughs> I'd say yes, for yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah hundred percent. Yeah. You know, right. Cause yeah. Like, oh, no. You stay no, 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 no. I mean, it, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you don't want to meet your heroes a lot of the times, but yeah. I just my, all my heroes have been, have been really nice or whatever. I think I just, I pick them well, I think, you yeah. know, and, uh, you know, but uh, um, but yeah, yeah, I I would for sure. But I would I may turn it down because I'd be just be too scared. You know, <laughs> that's the only reason I wouldn't. Because you would deal, you'd have to, you know. Of course, your fans would listen to it, but then you would deal with like Neil Young fans, and if they don't like it, I imagine the pressure. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. We've opened up some pretty big bands that didn't like us, and yeah, you just, I mean, it's it just comes with the territory. You know, you just take the gig and. You know, you don't try to impress everybody. It's one of those things. You know. Yeah, true. Yeah. We we opened up for Metallica once on Citadel Hill, and really? it was just a bunch of metalheads giving me the finger the whole time. <laughs> 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 it's just, it was fun. It was got to the point where we, me and the boys were just laughing because it was always, like, super hard. I mean, Metallica came to Halifax, right? I don't blame them at all, you know. I wasn't even wearing black or whatever. I just I wasn't trying to be a metal band. We just got the gig, and 
And it was just, oh yeah, just like so many middle fingers, like fuck, you know, like <laughs> it, was, it was really funny, you know. It's it's, but you had to look at the scale of the event, you know. Of, of I don't know why I'm picturing people in like corpse paint, like giving you the finger, you know, like that's <laughs> yeah. funnier yeah. if I do it that way. Yeah, it was there's all these pyro it was like all these pyrotechnics I was walking through a minefield. I was like, not only was I trying to like not blow myself up, so these packs of gunpowder everywhere, like hundreds of them. And it was like King's Quest, the video game, or so I was just trying to walk through all these things and then I would, you know, finally get to the edge of the stage and be just like a bunch of people like, you know, like a hundred middle fingers, you know. Hello everyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At the time, it was probably a little jarring. It was jarring for sure. But when you open up for Metallica, you, I guess you get ready for the jar, you know. It's just, you just, yeah, the whole thing's a jar. But, uh, a jar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jarry. It, it, it was. Bad jokes when applicable. Yeah, no, they're always welcome, trust me. But uh, yeah, that was a weird one for sure. Yeah. Cool. I didn't know you, I didn't know oh, that. that. I didn't know about that show. That's kind of cool. Yeah. I didn't know. Yeah. That. When was that? What year was that? I don't know, like 10 years ago, I guess now. I don't remember what year. Uh, bad with that. Um, Crazy. I'm wondering, yeah, I don't remember. I remember that. giving Kirk Hammett uh, a high five when he walked out of the <laughs> on the spot, and I was like, worth it. it you worth just like it. show the metal heads, you're like, we're friends, actually. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yourself, right? Like, yeah, actually. Yeah. They asked us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was that was a wild one for sure. Yeah. <laughs> what are some of the other bands that you've seen that have like kind of blew your mind, or if are, are there any like bucket list bands that you wish you could have seen or that are on your your list? Uh, yeah. I mean, I would have really liked to have seen full lineup ACDC, which I, I had a multiple chances to go see and didn't get to go see. Yes. You know, I really wish you know I had if just I had the, the opportunity and I, I didn't go, you know. Um, but um, yeah, there's. I mean, I, I don't know. I think I think Wilco is one of the bands that I can't believe my eyes when I watch them. You know, there's a few bands that are still going now, um, and Wilco is definitely one of them. You know, I saw Talib Kweli once at um, Webster Hall, open for the Roots. And uh, he just had a DJ and two backup singers, and it was like he like like the skies opened. It was crazy. Like it was one of the best shows I've ever seen. And um, yeah, I don't know. There's been you know, a lot of good ones, and and I just I'm so thankful for them because you you know you see a few shows and they're like okay sure a lot of bands I thought were going to be amazing kind of called it in you yeah. know and I'm sort of bummed. And um, you know I'm surprised bands any band after like when you live in hotels and vans and planes and hotels and airports all the time and you go and call it in i can't imagine like that existence like to for us it's because of that horribly mundane lifestyle that's like once you get on stage and you see people like actually like you and all, they came out and the 12 hour drive you just did and so when I see bands that call it in, it's like, why are you even here? Like, why are you just go home? Go see your kids. Like, you, you're missing the whole thing. You yeah. know? And it's there's like, definitely, yeah, we've seen some shows, like some of our heroes, some not, where you're just like, huh. And then some of them, like, you know, like still throw it down in their 70s and 80s, like better than, you know, bands in their 40s and 50s. Oh, mm. well, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Like, we just saw Aerosmith on the weekend, and, like, they were amazing. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah phenomenal and like we saw them outside i wasn't sure what the sound was in it it was great they didn't i thought i was watching aerosmith in 93 honestly i like i was only young but still it still felt like we were watching old aerosmith yeah 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 they made it their, they made it a point to be you know to 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 last this is like what three decades now almost four decades now to be relevant and they they are you know like it's uh i've never seen them and i really want to like me too. Yeah, they, they put on a really great, great show. If I if the one that I've seen now that's kind of touring around that I wish we had seen, like if it was in Toronto, was uh the Def Leopard Motley Crew Joan Jet tour. That one, like everybody I know going to see them says it's great. Right. And like anyone who's given Vince Neil a hard time, like you try being in your 60s, being in Motley Crue, mm. you're in your life and going and performing with them today. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> I could do maybe one show lip syncing and I'd be done, done yeah. for the count. Yeah, no, no, it's insane. Like those guys yeah. know. 
they know what's up. You know, they they just they know what a gig is. They know what it takes to. They they yeah. can't. They know what it's like to get like super high and drunk for weeks before a show. They tried that, didn't work. <laughs> you know, they're like, yeah. they're they're back to doing it. They're back to doing it uh, the right way. You know, the way that's you know sustainable. Yeah. No. No. That's yeah, we're we're all about like the shows and concerts, and we're excited. You know. To try to hit up some more but like you said everybody's just going full force into show mode so it's nice it's hard to kind of pick like where you're gonna go like we didn't expect to go to aerosmith like we won yeah. tickets on the radio yeah oh okay in the states so we didn't really have any plans to to go down i know sharice is going for stevie nicks in a couple of weeks but oh uh, that's i saw her in toronto it was amazing yeah uh, yeah, we so like, saw Fleet, we, we Kate and I saw Fleetwood Mac a couple of years back. So I'm excited to see like a solo show, like one of her, her yeah. and her own. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Landslide, it'll, it'll make, yeah, try holding back the tears to that one live. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. And I think like as you get older, like when you realize like what she was writing about at the mm -hmm. time and things like that, it really, as you grow older, you're just like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and like you said, they definitely the, the the soundtrack, the dynamic changes as you get older. So, but yeah, no, we're and we're excited. We're going to come up uh, to Harvest. You're going to be playing Harvest in yeah. the weeks. So for anyone yeah. listening, you better get your darn tootin' tickets. To yeah, so if it's not sold out already by the time uh, this is by the time this episode drops, but... I still think there's a few ultimate passes. Okay, I think, yes. like I think you can still potentially get in if you get an ultimate pass. And is that is that the pass of the whole weekend sort of thing? The yeah, ultimate, yeah. Pass? yeah, okay can't make it to the big 10 shows there's lots of shows at the cap um yes, and sir. i think there's a few smaller tents kicking around fredericton so yeah that's the thing with that weekend everything's curated so well every show you go to is going to be awesome you know that's the thing harvest is always like that it's always everything you see is always great yeah no we yeah. really appreciate it um what was our last thing we wanted to ask oh actually well we have a couple are you ready for more uh, tough questions matt always yes okay. So why don't we do? Um, well, no, let me turn the light on here. So. Okay, yeah. it's getting dark. I realize like the sun setting yeah. here, <laughs> disappearing well. into the backdrop. We're like it'll just be like our eyes glistening. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we go. Oh, yay! Amazing, cool. So we'll do this quick, rapid fire. Um, but the people want to know. Okay, the people need to. Answer. Are you? Um, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. All right. Awesome. All right. First one. Who would you rather collaborate with? Ooh. Gordon Lightfoot or Neil Young? Uh, I think I would, I would probably say Gordon Lightfoot because he'd be easier to collaborate with. I think he'd be more down to just sit down and work on a song, you know? Practical. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, True. Yeah. Who would you rather collaborate, collaborate with Alan Jackson or Loverboy? Uh, Alan Jackson, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this one, um, would you rather see Bob Dylan during the Rolling Thunder review tour or the night that he went electric at Newport Folk Festival? Rolling Thunder. Yeah. Ah, I don't know. I don't know, right? It's a toughie. It's a toughie. Yeah. Um, like no, I then I'd say, I'd say 66. I'd say when he went electric for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I respect that. Yeah. yeah. That's tough, though. Good question. Um, alpacas or dogs? Dogs. Dogs? Or yeah. alpaca dogs? Alpaca. Yeah. <laughs> that would be pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, this is a maritime one. Uh, Reggie's or King of Donaire? Uh, King of Donaire. I got to go. I mean, I love Reggie's, but, you know, King of Donaire yeah. is, yeah. Yeah, for it's sure. Home. Yeah, it's home. Yeah, it is. Yeah. All right. Now, this one. I said this in last minute. I didn't share this one with you guys, but Steely Dan or Nickelback? I know this one. Steely Dan. <laughs> oh my God. I totally thought you would have said Nickelback. No, <laughs> man. So no, 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 no. I just, I, I, I didn't say I didn't like Steely Dan. I just don't know them yet. I mean, I think it's sort of saving them, right? So Leaf sort of time infusing me into some records and getting me sort of Sort of baby stepping me into it, like you know. She just she's <laughs> driving the steely dance. <laughs> no, no, def definitely, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the nickel those guys personally, but I just I'm pretty sure that I won't like them as much as I would like Steely Dan. 
you know, by far, I think I already kind of like Steely Dan. I'm just kind of, I need to be like eased into it, you know, so I don't get too scared off too quick with its awesomeness or whatever. That's awesome. <laughs> Love that. Thank you so much for uh, doing that with us. And thank you for joining us this evening uh, for, for this episode. We really appreciate it. Anytime. Like, it's, you guys are fantastic. It's nice to know that you guys, there's some really good music lovers out there still. It makes me happy. Any, anytime. Anytime at all. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much what we do is just Answer. try to figure out ways to, you know, get out, explore people's love of music. I just watched, um, what was it? Pearl Jam Let's Play 2 documentary. Oh, nice. Wow. I heard it's pretty it's, awesome. It's really good. And it really, like, embodies, like, I think a big reason why we do Strange Grooves. Like, you know, we never know what people are going through or why they're going. And they could be dealing with the most, like, traumatic or most amazing things happening to them and, and going to these, like, phenomenally epic shows. Sure. And lyrics are hitting them in different ways. And they're just expressing it like everyone else. And I loved seeing those interviews and then seeing those people again in the crowd. I just thought that was really, so if you're looking for something music to watch, it's a really good documentary. Yeah. It sounds, it sounds really inspiring, you know, yeah. just going no, back to what we were talking, they're like the ultimate band these days, as far as band crowd connection, like they're yeah. just, they just got it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much again for joining us and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. It's so awesome. exciting. Harvest. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's always such a wicked crowd. I can't wait. It's always so fun. Like, yeah, we like are the funnest. Yeah, yeah. So. Okay. Well, thank you again, and thank you everyone for listening. And until next time, keep, keep it strange. strange. <laughs> See, See you guys. Take care. Bye. Bye.